Amen. In the, in the love of the Lord and Him just saving you so, a marvelous, marvelous and wonderful thing. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, sometimes it will get a hold of you and you will realize uh, exactly what it's about. Uh, and certainly not about us, but about Him. If you have your Bibles with you, I'd ask you to turn to the book of Psalms, Psalms chapter 40, and we're going to begin reading in verse 11. Psalms chapter 40, beginning in verse 11. Psalms 40, verse 11, uh, David writing says, With no, Withhold not thy tender mercies from me, O Lord. Let thy loving kindness and thy truth continually preserve me. For innumerable evils have compassed me about, mine iniquities have taken hold upon me, so that I am not able to look up, they are more than the, the hairs of my hand, head, therefore my heart faileth me. Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let them be ashamed that confounded together to seek my soul and destroy it. Let them be driven backward and put to shame that wish me evil. Let them be desolate for, for a reward of them that of their shame that say unto me, Aha! Aha! Let those seek thee to rejoice and be glad in thee. Let such as love thy salvation say continue, The Lord be magnified. I'll be preaching this morning on the thought, What do you do to magnify the Lord? Dear Lord, we thank You, we praise You, we give You all glory and honor and praise for who You are this morning. Lord God, help us to preach Your Word as You've given us, Lord, and that we would be faithful to it. Lord God, in a day where we're almost overwhelmed with, uh, with sin, Lord, that we might be a light, that we might be a help to others that, uh, that stand at guilty distance, Lord, and even to the lost. Lord God, help us to be the servants we ought to be. We pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, uh, David is writing a psalm really asking God to help him. Now, we'll see in a minute that, God, that David probably understands God's nature better than you. And that is in the fact that he knew God didn't have to do it. Uh, we live in a day and age where the little God of this world, if you say jump, God's got a hop. And that is not the God of the Bible. Right. Be because what that does, it excludes grace and it excludes mercy yeah. and really leaves salvation and deliverance in your hands, which we never could do. And as we see by the Word of God that that's exactly what it is, uh, we're just dependent on the goodness of God and that alone. Uh, we're going to go all the way back to the first verse, and it is a psalm of David. Now, David was your average biblical servant of God, redeemed in the sense so that you could be in the Old Testament, that fell on his face time and time and time again. And I don't know about you, but at least that's true in my own life. Sometimes I spend more time getting up than I do running forward, and that was David's situation his whole life. Now, with that said, it's no excuse because David had a problem. You know what your very best assignment as a Christian could be? Find out what your problem is and deal with it. Now, David had a, par a problem with women. And as best I can understand, he never dealt with it. Not really. Because what was their excuse when he was dying? Yeah. Hmm. Get a woman to crawl up in the bed with him, right? And, and, and so we see as the Lord's people what we need to do is deal with the problem as it comes. So back in the first ve uh, verse, uh, David says, I waited patiently for the Lord. Now, that, that is something that the modern day person doesn't have any experience in, is waiting patiently on the Lord. Now, uh, that's another thing about a little G God, a God that's under your dominion. You can snap your fingers and He'll appear. But that's not the God of the Bible. Sometimes He's going to make you wait. And the beauty of make, being made wait, when He comes, you rejoice even more. Praise God, He's finally here. I've been delivered. 
It's the goodness of God and the goodness of God alone. And so we find then that David probably had a better understanding of that principle of God than the modern day believer. I waited patiently for the Lord and He inclined unto me and heard my cry. Now, I've often wondered, and sometimes David writes, I wept with bitter tears, but when he cried, does he mean, Lord, help me, or was he weeping? I don't know. You, you know, if people today, and when they're in a dire spiritual condition, begin to say, Lord, help me, they'd soon be labeled as Pentecostal, right? Because, you know what? That's embarrassing, isn't it? You know, we, we you know, it's the nature of man to try to pray with his mind. <laughs> you do that? Yeah. Silent prayers. Mm -hmm. It ain't nothing wrong with that, but that's what we like to do because we want to be we don't want to be embarrassed, right? Yeah. And, and, and so we, as the Lord's people, uh, when David either said it loud or he said it with tears, but he waited patiently for the Lord to uh, respond. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit. Now, uh, I don't know if he's writing of his conversion of the day the Lord redeemed him, or he gotten out in the pit again. You know what? This is the truth of the matter. I've gotten into some pits after the Lord saved me, haven't you? And there's lots of them to get out there. Uh, uh, there's pornography. You can get into that pit real easy. There's drugs. There's alcohol. The pits are out there uh, for us to get into. And we need to be very careful of what we do. So I don't know where David's situation was. He might have been uh, talking about the mess that he got into with Bathsheba. Because you know what that was? It was a pit. It was a pit. And so we as the Lord's people, we need to understand and know, and first of all, have the spiritual sense to recognize when we're in a pit. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. Now, this is a very essential question this morning. Have you ever been set on the rock? Because you know what? If all you're depending on is inviting Jesus into your heart, you've never been set upon the rock. See, uh, you know what? When people come and go, when I was a young preacher, I've been preaching now over 24 years. When I was a young preacher, it bothered me people to go out that back door. But you know what? In the modern day, it don't bother me because all I can see is, well, you know, they must have not been set on the rock. And, and, and you know what? Uh, as crass as this may sound, you better off die. <laughs> right? Uh, a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Amen. And, and, and so then we as the Lord's people, we, we need to understand and know, has it happened or has it not? Has He saved you or are you still lost? He brought me out also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock. Here's the measurement. And established my goings. You know where you'll go? Where your nature leads you. If it leads you to the honky tonk, that's your nature. If it leads you to the house of God, that's your nature. And, and, and so you can think about this morning, wherever you end up at that, you got to that point by, by, by following your own nature. And, and we live in a day and age today, you, you know, uh, uh, I think I read this, like something like 9% of, uh, of American individuals overall attend church regularly. Now, here in the supposed Bible Belt in the South, uh, that, that's increased a little bit, but unfortunately you have places like Pittsburgh to deal with, right? And so over, over an all average, you know what? Uh, numbers don't mean a whole lot except to me it explains the nature of man. They're going where they're supposed to go. They're going where their nature leads them. And, and so David gives God and extols Him in praise that he had a better place to go now. Even to the so much the point. And you know, I praise God uh, every time I think of it that I never had to bury a child. 
But you know, David did. He buried more than one, in fact. And uh, he learned in that. Remember after the son by Bathsheba died and, and they was all scared and they was whispering, he's died, he's died. And uh, David said, listen, is the child dead? And he said, yeah. He washed himself up, trimmed his beard, and went down to the house of God. And, and, and so that ought to be the, the, dri the driver. You know what? It shouldn't be that the preacher has to do cartwheels and jumping jacks when you show up on Wednesday night. It ought to be our nature. Yeah. It ought to be what we decide, what, what we're driven to do. Verse 3. And he had put a new song in my <coughs> mouth. Now, let me tell you something about music. Young people, listen to me. Go with what the Lord has. And I mean that as sincere as I know how because those other tunes will get in your head. I know from experience and they'll never get out. And, and, and so David said, you know what? I don't know what Dave, David was listening to and got in his heart and mind before the Lord saved him, but he had something up there besides the Word of God. The Word of God, he says, and he put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. That, that ought to be what we do. Now, in this little church, we have uh, some good, good singers. Now, this is the problem. They don't always use what they have. And I don't mean that critically, but I mean it sincerely. I'm trying to help you because, listen, if you don't use, if you don't use a gift, you're going to lose it. So use it. And, and, and you know, uh, embarrassment doesn't, isn't an excuse. I never, ever imagined myself as a preacher. But I have to do it. And you know what? I really believe if I didn't, I would soon lose it. I, I wouldn't be able to preach anymore. And, and, and so we as the Lord's people, we need to use what God's given us. And so he enjoyed singing praise and playing his part for the cause of the Lord God. And he put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. Now, did you get that? He says, many people are going to sing my praises down the road, centuries down the road, and still praise God for it. You know, all of us as little youngins, we learned the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. And on and on we could go. You know what that is? That's the song David wrote. We ought to be able to give him a praise for it, right? Uh, give the Lord praise. And, and, and so David began to use his God-given gifts to the Lord God to lift him up and to praise him as he should. Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust, verse 4, and respecteth not the proud, for such as turn aside the lies, that is your politicians. Verse 5, Many, O Lord my God, are thy wonderful works. See, that's why you little, uh, you little African uh, uh, jungle people are going to be he held accountable to God too. It's because I look out here and I see the marvelous works of God. You know what? I really believe this. there's no prettier place on earth than Tennessee in the fall. We have a large majority of hardwoods. And they go through their seasons. It's just beautiful to look upon. You know what? They declare the omniscient, the omniscient God that we serve. That's right. Amen. They're, they, they say, here I am. I was made. Uh, recently, me and Don and the girls, we went down to, uh, to Alabama. And just as far as I can see, we looked out on the, on, on the ocean, and it, it was just incredible. Just unbelievable. Uh, that's God saying, here I am. That's right. Amen. And, and, and so, you know what? Uh, that's one thing that departs us from primitive Baptists or hard shells is that I believe, you know what? I believe it's my responsibility to share the gospel. It's the responsibility of this church to get out and to preach and teach the wonderful gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what? If I didn't believe that, I'd sit right here. 
And, and so David understands and knows and says, listen, God's everywhere and everything you see and everything you do and everything that you approach, God is there. Many, O oh Lord, many, O oh Lord my God, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done and thy thoughts which are to us for You know, uh, can you imagine that the mighty God of all heaven has thought specifically about you? That's right. Amen. That, 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 that just boggles my mind. It really does. Uh, uh, as a boy, when I was born with that tumor and they removed my kidney at uh, three days old, he was thinking of me then. Right. He knew that I needed to be a gospel preacher and he spared my life. Sure. Sure. See, that, that, that's just unbelievable to me. Uh, yeah. That he's preserved me so much. And, and that is the God of the Bible. No accidents, no, no happenstance. It is Him directing our paths continually. And, and David recognized that. He thinks about us. They cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. In other words, they can't be counted. They can't be even, really even, your, get your mind around all that He has done for you. From the smallest to the largest. all You know why you're here this morning? Because of the goodness of God. It wasn't because you got up and say, Hey, it's Sunday again. Larry's going to be looking for me. I guess I'll make myself do it one more time. No, no, you're here by the goodness of God. The reason you're here is because He put, he put you here. And we ought to be able to praise Him for that. You know what? Instead of finding it a burden, we ought to find it a privilege to be in the house of God. Sacrifice and offerings didst not sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. Now, this is unusual coming from a man that, that lived and, and literally even financed the, the first temple. He says, You're really not into that. And, and you know what? He wasn't. It was just a reminder saying, hey, it's, it's, it's by the blood. It's by the blood. Every time that blood spilt on the mercy seat, the only message you were getting is it's by the blood. Right. It's by the blood. And, 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 but David realized this. What, what you want is somebody that will obey you. What you want is someone that will magnify your name. And how could we possibly magnify the name of Christ when we're out in that world full force? Amen. That's right. It's an impossibility. It's an impossibility. And, and so we as the Lord's people, it ought to be our desire, as obviously it was David's desire, uh, to serve Him. Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire, mine ears hast thou opened. Now, if you don't get anything out of the message this morning but this, underline, highlight, commit to memory, his desire was not, was not just to see a big group of people going through some kind of religious circumstance. What he, what he really desired, what he wanted uh, those individuals to do is... Uh, Open ears. He, he says, Thou has opened my ears. You, know, you know why the gospel became precious to me? Is because he opened my ears. I had heard it hundreds, probably close to thousands of times before the Lord saved me, but he had to open these ears. And you know what? Sin will clog them back up. Amen. Now, it ain't going to make you lost again, but you won't be obedient. You know why genuinely redeemed people uh, get out in the world? Their spiritual hearing is blocked. I don't have my hearing aids on today. I forgot them. First time I think that's happened. And I had to have this one worked on this week. And it wasn't working. And you, and you know why? You know uh, why it wasn't working? It was stopped up. And a lot of times we get our spiritual ears stopped up, don't we? And, and I'll tell you how that happens. It happens by you getting out and seeing. Amen. Sure. And you know, this is the thing about sin. Now, uh, it's just like swimming in cold water. Creek, Cross Creek down here at Carlisle is the coldest creek in Stewart County, I will assure you. Because I've, I've swam in a lot of it. But you know what you do? 
you jump in and you get used to it. And pretty soon you're not even shivering anymore. And that's exactly how sin goes. We, and, and you know, none of us jump in now. The, the boys make fun of me now because I, that cold water just a lot worse on me than it was when I was a kid. And I kind of walk out real slow or put my toe over. I'm like, I can't do this. Uh, but if I do it real slow, and, that, and, and that's the nature of man. We don't just jump off the bridge and, and jump in. We toe tap it. Oh, a little bit more person. Uh, but eventually, obviously, it does. We, 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 we find ourselves in sin, and then we're no longer hearing the things of God. That's why leaving church is easy. That's why staying out of church becomes just a thing, is because we are not hearing from God. Burnt offerings and sin offerings has thou not uh, required. Now, verse 7 is an unusual verse, and I don't know what type of Bible you have, and I don't mean uh, translation. I hope translation-wise you've got a King James there in your lap. But uh, mine is uh, like a Nelson or something like that. And beside verse 7, there's a star. And supposedly, all those stars indicate the coming of Christ. But let me say this. The verse starts with I. And who is the I in this text? It's David, right? And, and so I have to believe that this, and, and I can see an application to Christ, but I have to believe that David is speaking to himself or of himself. And, and, and so uh, sometimes I wonder if we just don't avoid it because we don't want to hear what it says. Then I said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. Now, this is the reason I don't think people like to hear it. 39 books, as Brother Junior said this morning, 39 books. That is a condemnation and a sentence to me. Meaning it is, you are lost, you are undone. It is a hopeless and helpless thing. The whole volume says, Larry Lafferty, you're on your way to hell. That's why we don't like to take that one personal. But blessed be the name of God, 39 books saying, Here, I'm the hope. Amen. Here, I'm the answer. Amen. Here, I'm the Lord Jesus Christ in the very same pages. And, and so we as the Lord's people, we need, to, we need to understand and know that this book will always be used, always be, always be the benchmark for everything else. David says again of himself, I delight, I delight to do thy will. It makes me happy, it makes me glad. You know what? I, I never understand people that get so hung up on biblical separation because you know what? I delight in it. I really do. If, 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 I'm, in the, if I'm in the right spirit, if I'm in the right, I'm in the right spiritual condition, I delight in the fact, you know, and Adam can verify this every two weeks. And the reason I delight in the fact, because the Bible is very clear, it's a shame for me to have one day. So, you know what? I go with the short stuff. Similarly, ladies, it's a shame for you to have short hair. And don't ever give, don't, don't, don't ever <laughs> and you know, uh, people always want to compare that, don't they? Well, you look how short my hair is, and I'm about due, I think Tuesday. And so, uh, let's see who. I'm seeing you, but you long hair men in here. <laughs> but, you know, Donna's hair is long. It comes down about the middle of the back. If it was here, my hair would be short, right? Don't ever fall into that trap. Yeah. You don't compare yourself to anybody but that book. Amen. That's right. You're right. You, you know what long means? It means long. Right. And you know what short means? It means short. You don't lose nothing in the Hebrew and Greek. Uh, right? It means exactly what it says. It says what it means. And so, you know what? Uh, I want to delight in a, a routine haircut and getting my hair in compliance with the Word of God. I want to delight in the fact that, that I have an opportunity to spread the gospel twice a week. I want to delight in that. You want to delight in not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together. 
You are a delight in the Word of God. And when you're in His will, you will. Amen. But when you're out of His will, you know what? You'll hate it. You know, I, I'm sure when people get out those little flyers for upcoming meetings and they see Larry Lafferty on there, they're like, okay, here we go again. That they brace themselves for get yourself out of your britches, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know what? It don't bother me being known that way. It don't bother me a bit. Hmm. See, what we need to do is align up. He says, I delight to you. I enjoy doing your will. He is a blessing to me. And we as the Lord's people, we ought to delight in doing the very will of God no matter what else may be fall, You know, all hell be a cell around us. We need to delight in the will, of, uh, the will of God. I delight to do thy will. Oh my God, yea, thy law is within my heart. You know what? Uh, in the New Testament, even Paul writes, he says those that are Gentiles do what's contained in the book because it's written in their hearts. You know what? It, that's how it ought to be with us. If we're really redeemed, the precious law of the Lord Jesus Christ will be just inscribed right here right. and right. not be an issue for us. Right. Not be a problem for us anymore, but, but have, a, have an identity to simply rejoice that God has done this great, wonderful thing for us. He, he Notice in verse 9 the result in His life. I have preached righteousness. <laughs> How many sermons you haven't heard on that? David says, I preach righteousness. You know what righteousness is about? Being right with this. Amen. Right. That's, that's all righteousness is. Aligning yourself to scriptures. He says, I preached it. And again, it may not be, it may not be a hallelujah pew walking message, but it's true. It, it, it is very true. I have preached righteousness in the great congregation and all of Israel is what that means. Lo, I have not reframed my lips, O Lord, thou knowest. I have not hid thy right, righteousness within my heart. Now, there are individuals uh, in the Word of God that did that. <laughs> Closet Christians, right? You know who was one that most people were surprised? Joseph of Arimathea. He, he, it says concerning Joseph of Arimathea when he went to beg the body of Jesus, he said he was a disciple, but secretly. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I would to God that I'd never be ashamed of Jesus. Amen. We, we, we need to get there. On the workplace, at home, wherever you're at, that you're not afraid to mention and speak the name of Christ. We, we ought to be zealous to do so. We ought to be glad and happy that, that we even have the opportunity. I have uh, not hid thy righteousness within my heart. I have declared thy faithfulness. You know, what a wonderful message. I, I wish I could preach a message on that. And would have if I had been given the liberty of God. Great is thy faithfulness. You know what? He's been awfully, awfully, awfully good to me. From the very beginning of my life, right down to this present day, my God has been faithful. You know what? I've never been hungry that I can remember. Not really. Now, I may not want it what Mom put in front of me, but you know what? That ain't hungry. That's right. You know, you know if you're hungry enough, the beans will look appealing. <laughs> And if you turn them down, I'll guarantee you by the next time around, you eat them. Right? And, and so we as the Lord's people, uh, He's been so faithful and so good to us. How could we ever deny His name? How could we ever not follow His precepts? But we do. Great. I declare thy faithfulness and thy salvation. I have not concealed thy loving kindness. And thy truth from the great congregation. Now today, in the modern day, there's a concealing of truth. And this concealing goes this way among largely all other denominations, even Southern Baptists, and I'm not afraid to say that. That salvation is your choice. 
And that is not true. That's a concealing of the Word of God. Yeah. You know whose choice it is? It belongs to God. Amen. Jacob have I loved and Esau. I didn't like him less. I hated him. <laughs> I hated him. You know, that, that, that's some powerful words coming from the Almighty, isn't it? I hate him. <laughs> and, 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 so, uh, and, and so we as the Lord's people, if you're saved and he's, and he's truly made you born again, we ought to be able to lift up his name. You know why I really believe people forsake the assembling today? It's not, you know what they are? They're following their nature. We ought not have to beg people the house of God. They're following. You can tell me whatever you want to. They're following their nature. And, and, and so we as the Lord's people, it ought to be our desire, those of us that are redeemed, to say, listen, blessed be the name of the Lord. Verse 11. Withhold not thy tender mercies from me. Now, he just gave this wonderful testimony of salvation and the results of that testimony, uh, that salvation in his life. And the very next thing he says, don't withhold thy tender mercies from me. And that says this to me, and he better say it to you too, that you know what? He can withhold it from the redeemed. I've told my congregation this lots of times. My mother thought she could pray my sister well. And I said, Mama, you can't do that. You can pray for her, but you can't demand things from God. Amen. And you know what? When Judy went out into eternity, Mama was just a broken shell. Not just the fact, I can't imagine giving up a child. I really can't. Especially after you already had it for 44 years. But more so than the loss of my sister, she felt like a failure. Can, can you imagine that? That, that you felt that you let your daughter down to the point she died. Mm. I mean, that would be miserable, would it not? But David understood, if you bless me, it's because of your goodness. And not because I deserve it, not because I asked for it, not because I demanded it in some kind of crazy prayer, but because of your goodness. Withhold not thy tender mercies from me, O Lord. Let thy loving kindness and my truth Continually preserve me. You talk about a verse for security of the believer. There it is. You, you, you know why you're secure? Because you're in Christ. Not because of what some you've done. Verse 12. For the innumerable, for innumerable evils have compassed me about. Now listen, people. That's an everyday occurrence. Every day, you're going to be presented with an opportunity to go in the way of the world. Every day, multiple opportunities to deny the name of Christ. And, and listen, you don't, you don't have to deny him saying, well, I don't know Christ. Like old Peter did. But you can deny him in your actions. You can deny him where you go. You can deny him in what you do. You can die and hunt. And, and, and here, David understood that principle. He, he understood that that could be the result. Uh, that this sin was so much of a, uh, of a problem in his life. It was such a, a, a risk that he didn't want to be involved. For innumerable evils have compassed me about. My iniquities, mine, the ones that belong to me, the ones that is my little sins that hurt me so bad. My iniquities have taken hold upon me so that I am not able to look up. Now, you know, uh, sometimes our, our customs, even, even churches like ours that try to really say, you know, that's very Catholic, we better not be involved in it. You, you know what this is? It's Catholic. It really is. Most prayers of the Bible, you find that they're doing this. But David couldn't do it. So th th this is shame. And listen, this is probably where most of us are most of the time. Is this. But we're in the will of God. Blessed be the Most High. Gloryful and mighty and wonderful are your ways. Give Him extolling, praising, lift Him up. Bending your face down is a shame. Now, uh, I was raised in a single parent home. 
And sometimes we do something, and Mama, and she already knew it. Larry, did you do that? Yeah, Mama. And you know why? Because I couldn't look her in the eye. Is it not the same way with the mighty God of the Bible? Sure it is. Sure it is. And, and so we then, David had so much iniquity and, and sin in his life that, that he, he said, listen, I can't even look at him. I can't even look up toward glory in the condition that I am. Therefore my heart faileth me. Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let them be ashamed and confounded together that seek my soul to destroy it. Let them be driven backward and put to shame that wish to me do evil. Now listen, church, the world does not have your best interest at heart. Don't ever be tricked into that. Amen. I don't care how long they've been your friend. You know what? You still mark them as an enemy. Because they do. He says, listen, they've confounded me. You know what confounded means? It means to confuse. That's exactly what it means. And so, uh, you, you know what, you know what Campbellite people will do to you? They run to Acts 238, boom. Right? Just read 39 and 42. <laughs> right. Because it, it, it literally says. To be baptized for salvation. I and mean, it's in there just like that. Mm -hmm. But they want to pull that text, don't they? Right. They, they, want to, they don't want to read 30, they don't want to read 39 and 40, do they? And the reason, and, but you know what? For someone that's not been discipled, you're like, man, Larry sold me a bill of goods. First of all, don't listen to what I say. You get in that Bible like the Bereans and you find out for yourself. And, and, and so we, we as the Lord's people, uh, very frequently we will get in a situation, David got in a situation that, that he was confused. Verse 15, let them be desolate or thirsty or drying up. Let them be desolate for a reward. For their shame shall say unto me, Aha! Aha! Now, what, what, what aha means is an accusation. What it means is I've got you. You know what they said when he shacked up with Bathsheba? Aha! We got you. You know what, what he did when he, when he killed uh, uh, Bathsheba's first husband? Aha! We got you. We got you again. Aha. You, you know what? The world dearly loves that. They dearly love to say and you call yourself a Christian. They, 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 they love it. And, and so I want you to see that, that David, David was in a mess. David was in a situation that he knew he was saved but he knew he was in a mess. Verse 16. Let those that seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee. Now I ask you this morning that you come seeking the Lord. Because it says, let those that seek thee rejoice. You, you, you know why I think some people go home on empty? They never, they never sought to start with. Yeah. You, you know what you have to do to fill your car up with gas? Stop at the pump. And then you have to get out, you know. I, I'm old enough to remember full the first job I had was pumping gas. And, and you still pull it up and someone come out and shh, you don't get that no more. You have to get out and pump it yourself. But you will never get your tank full sitting in the car. Right. And you won't get your tank full just sitting listening to me. You have to be ready. You have to be prepared. You have to be, you have to be receptive to the Word of God. And, and you know what? Sometimes what we need to do is just take the cap off so we can get the hose in. And then the Lord will bless us in a great and mighty way. Let all those that seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee. You know what? I don't care what's going on in your life this morning. I don't care what troubles you've been in. I don't, I don't really care. Uh, but you know what? You can be glad in Christ. You know what? I never, ever, ever have to face eternity alone. I am glad in that. 
I don't fear hell in the least. You say, well, that's all for presumptuous. No, it's not, because that's on the merit of Christ. Amen. Not me. It's not presumptuous at all. Nope. We've got a lot to be glad about. Amen. So why do we come in? Oh, brother Larry, I just don't know what to do. Look unto Christ! <laughs> that's all I can tell you to do. Look unto Christ. I'll pray for you. Oh, we can go through the Scriptures together, but listen, if you want gladness, it doesn't come from me. It comes from Christ. Re let all those that seek, seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee. Let such as love thy salvation say continually, the Lord be magnified. Amen. Now, I want you to see such as love thy salvation. You know what? We ought to love that more than anything else. We ought to love the fact that we're saved more than we do our wife or our husband. Amen. Just love thy salvation. That's right. Love the eternity of it. L love the fact that it didn't, it didn't cost you one thing. Love the fact that, that He made something out of nothing. Love that. Love it continually. And that as a result, the Lord be magnified. Amen. You know who's magnified in the Catholic Church? The Pope. You. Yeah. The Lord's not magnified in that. Yeah. You know something else? A little trinket that's magnified? A crucifix. Yeah, that's right. You know what that is? That's a piece of metal. That's right. That's all it is. Yeah. The Lord be magnified. You know why grace is hated so much? It's because it magnifies the Lord and the Lord alone. That's right. That's why it's despised. Yeah. Amen. You know, you know, you know who's baptized in baptismal regeneration? You know who's glorified in that? The person that made the decision to be baptized. Yeah. I, I have nothing to be magnified for, do you? Certainly not. The Lord be magnified. We, we live in a day and age where simply the Lord is not magnified enough. That He's not the reason that we go. He's not the reason that we worship. He's not the reason that we lift up. Now very quickly, in the Gospel of Matthew, I'm going to just read a couple of verses. I had another whole excerpt there, but I know y'all getting hungry. Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. We'll begin reading in verse 24. Matthew chapter 8 and verse 24. The Lord had directed them to get into a ship. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waters, but he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he saith unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Now, I want you to see that he asked the question and he answers it in the same breath. Why are ye fearful? You know why you're fearful this morning? You don't have enough faith. That, that's why we're fearful. You know why people get antsy? Here in Tornado Alley? Because, because we don't have enough faith. You know, I think in one case that he said, Great is your Remember, remember uh, the young girl that was dying over her home and, and, and the ruler came and said, I'm not worthy that you come into my house. Just speak it. He said, I've not found faith like that in Israel. We need to be not a faithful people. Faithful is coming to church regularly. We need to have, we need both. But you need to have faith. Right. Yeah. You need to believe God is able. You know what? I don't know that He'll ever do it again, but this bunch down in Washington, it's under the mighty power of God. He could open the mouth like He did with Cora and his band and swallow them up and they'd be out of our way forever. Right? See, that is the God of the Bible. But you know, you know what people say? Well, that was in the Old Testament. Well, let me give you this. 
I am the Lord. I change not. Amen. That's right. And uh, he doesn't. He can still do it. If it's under his will and under his control, certainly he's still able to do that. So he, he rebuked them. And then, you know, he rebuked the wind and said, cease, be still. And they came and worshipped him. Why do we always have to wait to worship until God does something? Right. But we do, do we not? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, not to be. That's, that, that's very little faith. Then they hit shore. Verse 29, And behold, they, meaning the demons, cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? Now, this little band, you know what? One good thing about demons, devils, they know the Lord God. Because remember uh, when, when, when uh, was it Stevus? Stevius? I can't remember the name. Skeva. Skeva. And he had that boy, his boys cast out people in the name of Jesus and they didn't even know Jesus. And, and, and that demon said, well, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are ye? See, Jesus, you know, that's why this thing, do you know Jesus? Well, it don't matter whether you've heard of Him or not. Do you know Him? Right. Because, see, uh, uh, just because you know about Jesus don't mean you've been redeemed. Amen. And, and, and so we, we as the Lord's people, we ought to have an interest and we ought to have a desire to serve Him more than the average. And so these demons said to Him, you know, uh, what are you going to do to us? And there was a good way off from them a herd of swine feeding. So the devils, plural, besought them, saying, If thou cast us out, suffer us to go away into the herd of swine. And He said unto them, Go. <laughs> One little two letter word and the demons crumbled. Mm -hmm. hey, isn't, that a, isn't that a powerful God? Amen. Go. Now, uh, don't ever under mad, underestimate demonic possession. It's a real deal that Baptist churches have skirted for years. We, we need to understand and know that, that people are demonically possessed. And they are demonically influenced. Just because you're redeemed don't mean you can't be influenced by them, right? That's right. I'm not possessed of a stop sign, but I'll obey it. <laughs> yeah. And so we as the Lord's people, we need to understand and know that our God is all sovereign and all powerful. Would you... Would you Magnify him this morning? Would you would you lift up his name? That that that's what it's really about. From what I can see in, in, in the salutation of David that we read, he wasn't concerned as much about being delivered. He was going to praise God anyway. I think it was Wednesday night. We looked in on uh, Daniel chapter three, maybe it was last Sunday, I don't know. Had three boys down there in the furnace. And what was their statement? They said, We're not, they didn't say, We're going to demand that God deliver us. They said, If it so be, if it so please the Lord, <laughs> He can deliver us. If not, we're going to serve Him anyway. Right out of the car. See, it don't have to be lotty, dotty, dotty for you to serve God. You know what? It's been few and far between days in my life that me and Don has been like Jim and Ward Cleveland. You know, uh, it's just not that way. That that's something out of Hollywood. <laughs> that's right. So serve him anyway. When they said, "There's nothing more I can do for you medically," serve him anyway. When 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 they say, "Listen." You overdrawn at the bank again. You gonna have to. You gonna have to have some money, or we gonna shut you down. Serve him anyway. See, not just in the good times. Serve him yeah. anyway. Yeah, right. Praise and extol his name.